WarroomSports.com. Get that mobile app. Hey, basketball fans, and welcome to another edition of Court Vision, brought to you as usual by War Room Sports in conjunction with the Sports Kings. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Dev from War Room Sports. And at the round table this evening, we got B. Austin, the hot black commander, War Room Sports. What up, Dom? Yo, if you look closely at my eyes, I'm crying, man, because I thought LeBron was going to give a better effort this night. And he did, he did the same thing. <laughs> That's my quarterback. Why did he quit? Why did he quit? We got the homie Frank from the Sports Kings. What up, Frank? My colleague Andy Flynn was going to be here, but he didn't want it enough. Hollywood. <laughs> we got Jimmy Man, the Blueprint. Fight him, man. Sports. What up, Jimmy? Oh, man. Court Vision has not been here in a while, but we got time today, cuz. We about to keep it G real with y'all, man. Let's go. All right, so we're here. We're ready to do this NBA Finals recap, but before we do, Make sure you guys check out warroomsports.com, sports-kings.com. And if you're all about that basketball, make sure when you go to sports-kings.com, click on that Pass the Pill tab. And make sure you go to the War Room Sports mobile app on iOS and Android. Yes, sir. Word, B. Join here on Court Vision and all the other shows we got, Podcast Network. Y'all know the drill. But look, the 2014-2015 NBA Finals are now over. Congratulations to the Golden State Warriors who took out the mm-hmm. Cavaliers in six games. Crazy that I changed my my, my prediction last minute because I had Golden State in six and then took them in seven. I would have been a genius. But uh, either way, fellas, let's let's talk about this series because it seems as though you know, even though it only ended less than 24 hours ago, it seems as though even though the Golden State Warriors won in six in impressive fashion since they won the last three games. All anybody can talk about is LeBron James and what this does or doesn't do for his legacy. What are your thoughts on that, fellas? I didn't know that um, Golden State actually won until you just said so. I just thought LeBron lost. I didn't know that Golden State actually was there. Um, you know, just found out they were actually there the last six games. Right. Uh, in terms of the whole LeBron thing, man, like, yo, it's, it's just like any other time, man. The haters are just as bad as the sycophants. It's just ridiculous. But the fact of the matter is, man, like we always say, heavy is the head that wears the crown. You would think that no one else lost but LeBron because um, he gets all the blame. But, again, when they win, when he wins, they get all the credit. It is what it is. Uh, in yeah, terms he's like, of his, he's like a quarterback. Of, yeah, in terms of his overall legacy, man, like it's funny because, you know, a Peyton Manning goes through this damn near every year in football, right, where people forget that Peyton actually has a championship and they talk about he'll never win and yada, yada, yada. LeBron got two chips. Now, granted, he lost four. But, you know, Peyton Manning has a losing record in the Super Bowl. So it's, it's sort of like the same thing. And from a historical standpoint, they always want to compare him to Mike. Well, he's not Mike. He's not Kobe. It kind of reminds me. It kind of right. reminds me of, like, Wilt Chamberlain, right? Um, just from, you know, doing a lot of reading and, and, and seeing some things. When people talk about this series years later, they're going to say that, you know, LeBron lost his four finals. But, you know, we always talk about how there's context to everything. Um, and I'm not one. I'm not sitting here making excuses, but there is context to how he lost this series. But there was also context to the way that Wilt Chamberlain lost a lot of his series, going into his a couple finals or a couple Eastern Conference championships that he lost. He had key injuries. There was one series where they had to move all his home games because they got like bumped out of this arena for the circuits. Like just dumb, just dumb stuff, right? <laughs> could you imagine the NBA? Getting, could you imagine the NBA? The yo, could you imagine the NBA getting bumped out for the circus these days? But back then, the circus was the big draw. But nonetheless, my point in saying all that is, there's always context to everything. Um, so historically, we'll see how this is looked at. It, whether it's just a numbers thing, but LeBron lost his four finals. But again, when he wins, like he did in Game Three, when everybody thought like that was the end of the series, and we talked about it on our podcast, like yo, the series isn't over. Why are you all on LeBron's Johnson? Um, he gets all the credit, so it is what it is. You know what I mean? The fact of the matter is why he makes the big bucks. Is why he's called the king. He gets the commercial. So when you lose, you gotta take it on the chin. Yo, yeah. after game three, fans were it, it got really ridiculous after game three. Um, and, and you know the the injuries were an unfortunate part of everything, but at the same time, like we said, up until game four. Everybody thought it was a wrap. They thought Cleveland was going to win because of how they, quote-unquote, bullied the Warriors, you know, through the first three games of the series. Um, it, it, it just got really ridiculous. And, and we know we live in this prisoner-of-the-moment society. Um, 
and even in the seven game series, you know, one game means so much to the average fan, and they think they're going to be able to um, tell us what's going to happen throughout the rest of the series because of one good game by either team. Um, heavy is the head that, that wears the crown. Um, my thoughts on it from the very beginning, since I, you know, even knowing that Cleveland was a little bit shorthanded going into the series and then losing Kyrie, uh, me saying that uh, Golden State would win in seven still basically told you that I thought Cleveland had a chance to win the series. So I don't really like to hear the excuses after the fact, but even though this is not really after the fact because people were laying LeBron's excuses for him, you know, even before, in, in the beginning of the series, especially when when Kyrie did go down. But at the same time, LeBron James is head and shoulders better than anybody else in the National Basketball Association and probably waist high better than anybody on the Golden State Warriors. Therefore, I still think no matter what his supporting cast is, he had a pretty good chance to win. But, you know, I would rather see the two teams go at it, you know, with everybody healthy. But Full strength. It's a and, you know, that, that's the sad. That's the sad part about this is because people, Kyrie Irving is a hell of a player. Like there's this young crop of uh, point guards, and I guess Steph at this point put himself at a different little level. But you know the John Walls, the Kyrie Irvings, the Steph Currys before the series, and just I, I was looking forward to seeing that matchup. Now, Mike granted, Con- Mike Conley's. You know, see, My man in Portland, I probably throw him in the mix a little Damian bit. You know what I'm saying? Damian Lillard, but you know there's a nice young crop of point guards out there. But um, um, so I was looking forward to seeing Kyrie and Steph go at it. Now, granted, in the first game they said Kyrie was only at like 65 percent anyway, so who knows how effective he could have been? But even at 65 percent, at 65 percent, he had 20 some odd points yeah. before he blew his knee out. Like, so you know what I mean? Like, we that's the unfortunate thing about this, Dev. What you just said is we don't get to see them at full strength, and they may never meet in the finals again. I mean. If I had to handicap it right now, I think Cleveland probably has an easier road to get back to the finals than Golden State. Truthfully, but, um, and I'm a Kyrie fan, Jim, but truthfully, I think had Kyrie been um, healthy throughout the whole series, I think Steph would have probably easily won the MVP. Not that he's that much better than Kyrie, but the Kyrie defense, don't play no defense. <laughs> he would, he would have much Kyrie probably would have got his numbers as well, but. Steph probably would have averaged more points. You know, I, 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 listen, I, I understand where you're coming from with that, but um, he wouldn't gave it's, it's, it's interesting. But there's so many, there's so so many similarities, and, and like I said, just from reading the history of the game and, and, and how things have occurred, there's still so, so many similarities between looking at this from the numbers that LeBron put up in the series. Um, he's the first NBA player in the history of the league to actually lead lead a finals in scoring, rebounding, and assists. But there's from the numbers he put up to the way they lost to how he's taking all the hits now, it's so it, it reminds me of Wilt Chamberlain so much because there were several times when and even, even coming into this series, we all had said that Golden State has a better team, but LeBron James is the better player. You no, know, he's also the first player in NBA history to score at least 100 points by two minutes and 34 seconds left in the yeah, all the ESPN three. Yeah, I get that, but but my yeah. point no, my point in saying that is is like there were so many times in, in Wilt Chamberlain's career where. He's the best player on the floor by far, and they lost to better teams. Look, it just man. reminds me of that so much. And the thing about it is, Wilt Chamberlain yeah. took heat too. So it's not it's not like he shouldn't take the heat that he's taking because Wilt, to this day, takes heat about sure. like not winning as many championships as you know, only winning two championships. Just didn't have social media. Right. I mean, some of these things are excuses for LeBron, but I mean, some of them are also facts. I mean, it is a fact that Amon Shumpert and J.R. Smith shot 38 percent for the series. That that Try that down. happened. I mean, he needs – part of the is getting guys open shots. And if he gets you those open shots and you don't hit them, I mean, that, you know, at some point there has to be some supporting cast. And I, I think what people forget is that even when we thought Kyrie was going to play the whole series, they, uh, uh, most people had the Warriors winning the series. Most people I spoke to before the finals, I think on this show, I think Jimmy was the only person that took the Cavs to yeah. win. I mean, they would have been all the Warriors were going to beat tripping. them anyways. So, I mean – I mean, you you have to at least. I, I think it's it's funny how like the, the narrative switched to LeBron losing, like like we brought up at the beginning of the show when everybody thought he was gonna lose anyways. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, like we're like we're surprised that he lost. No, we all thought he was gonna lose. And Vegas, I mean, I Vegas, had the Warriors, Vegas had the Warriors as the favorite coming into the series. Yeah, I mean they had to be. I think what's and what's getting lost, unfortunately, like we're bringing up, is that the Warriors have had one of the most dominant seasons in recent <laughs> NBA history. Probably the most dominant season since. With the the Lakers with Kobe and Shaq, I mean, 
They won 67 games in a loaded Western Conference, and they breezed through the, the playoffs. They never faced an elimination game. They did not have an elimination game in the playoffs. I mean, that that's impressive in its own. You know what I mean? So I think all the credit should go to the Warriors. It is, I mean, it, uh, of course, some of it falls on LeBron. That's that's goes without saying, but... I mean, there are some excuses, and there are also facts. The, the fact is that Timothy Mozgov was the second best player on the Cavaliers. I mean, not, it, you're not going to win a series that way. That's not going to happen. Hey, Frank, it's, I'm ten, not, it's ten minutes into this show, and you like we just bringing up the Warriors and how good they played. Yeah. I'm not Skip Bayless, <laughs> so, so I'm not going to take the Warriors credit because you beat who who they put in front of you. But they did breeze through the playoffs, but they Luck. escaped all yeah. of the teams that yeah. probably would have given them, you know, Yo, a, even, a big. Wow. Even beyond the teams they played, I've never seen a team get like every team they played had an injured point guard. How is that even possible? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, because they play teams Steph. that are always like no. Jay Ru Holiday's been injured his entire career, yeah. so he's out. Steph either <laughs> made Steph either made that deal with the devil, or yeah. Steph uh, yeah. Steph uh, is down with Tim Tebus. Um, either or, either way, it's, it's, it was some luck there. But um, I want to talk about a couple of things. First and foremost, man, salute to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, long time coming, great, great fan base. Uh, their ownership team, uh, you know, is bringing uh, you know diversity and rainbow to uh, to the NBA um, at that level, at the executive level. So you know, uh, salute to them. Um, yo, salute to my man Eagle Dollar. Um, Jimmy, that's you know, Jimmy coined. Uh, Eagle Dollar, uh, Andre. I can't take Eagle. credit for that. The internet's did it, but I'm yeah. ran with it. Andre, e- Andre Eagle, Eagle Dollar, um, <laughs> who, and salute to Steve Kerr because Steve Kerr faced a little bit of adversity coaching against the Cleveland Cavaliers and was able to make the the in series adjustments uh, to small ball, uh, shifting the personnel around, and and really taking advantage of matchups that favored his squad. So salute to him. It wasn't uh, like he was going against George, George Carl or Phil Jackson or Larry Brown, though. <laughs> that, that's, he was going against the great David Blatt. That's another story. The great David Blatt. The great David Blatt. <laughs> so, so, you know, he was able to use his personnel. Um, and, 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 you know, so I don't want to – I want to make sure that I preface everything I say with salute to the champs. You guys are the champs. You earned it. You went, in, went ahead and took it. Um, even though Steph didn't get any votes for MVP – you the real MVP champ. Um, and he votes for Finals MVP. Correct. Cool. Went to LeBron. Finals MVP. <laughs> those one vote went to LeBron. Uh, no, no, I thought I votes. thought it was amazing that Steph like was able to show up in the fourth quarter. It was kind of like with each of these games. Um, as the game went on, he got stronger. And when fourth quarter came around, he stepped up on that stage and you know put up 15, put up 11, put up 17. Like seize the moment and enforce it. Kind of enforce his will upon the game. Um, Let's step down. <sighs> LeBron James. Um, I don't think, outside of Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, I personally, I don't remember ever seeing a statistical performance across six games the way that he performed. I mean, the numbers were Michael staggering. Jordan and Phoenix. Michael Jordan against Phoenix uh, trumped Trump LeBron. So, you know, Michael Jordan is number one there. So I, I definitely so you know, that's I was, he was mad because they tried to check him with Dan Marley. Yeah, yeah. He gave he gave him that he gave him that work. LeBron evidently wasn't right. mad that they tried tried to check him with basic Barnes. Um but he, he, uh, Iggy, man. Iggy, yeah, Iggy put that work in. But Eagle Dollar. Here's my issue. Um eighteen what what was it? Eighteen million people were tuned in to, to these games on average. Some some crazy number. It was the highest rated finals of all time. The number is either eighteen or eight. I I, I there's an eight in there somewhere, but it was a whole heap of a lot of people. <laughs> the big it, was a whole, it was a whole it was a whole hell of a lot of people. He said eighteen or eight, like that's close. <laughs> it's ten million ten million person difference, but and so your boss tell you either make eight dollars an hour or eighteen dollars an hour. I have to say, <laughs> I say neither. Um, As boss, oh. <laughs> ne- never have we seen the prisoner of the moment and lazy analysis of human beings come into play as we did in this series, man. Um, the hero worship was off the off the hook. Yo, salute to LeBron, man. Salute to LeBron, but yo, the excuses. And the apologists 
and the Richard Riders and the Sycophants were all out in mass, and Still it was on. like they they flipped the switch. Like on one level, after Game Three, it was how could Golden State possibly win this series with the great behemoth, our God LeBron, <laughs> uh, stepping up to the plate and putting up thirty, 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 and thirty. <laughs> and then within the span of 72 hours, that changed, that changed to life. LeBron's out there by himself. LeBron has to do all of this alone. Della Dova who? In game three or game four, Della Dova was LeBron's sidekick and the second best player in the world. I mean, yo, the no, excuses wait, were wait, crazy. Let, his jersey was the highest seller on Fanatics last week. Yeah, listen. It's crazy. Right. I mean, I don't a lot of to refunds me, since then, but my yeah. issue, my shout issue is my issue, fanatics, my issue is not with LeBron James. Uh, well, yeah, it is. There is a little bit of an issue there, but by and large, the issue is more with the way society perceived these games in this sport, and the prisoner of the moment talk and the lazy analysis instead of really watching and dialing into these games. I have a problem with that, man. This yeah, is yeah, I think that's, was, that's disgusting. a good point. I, I think it's prisoner, a good point because anybody. Disgusting. Anybody that watched, I mean, even the games that the Cavaliers won, to me, watching all six games, it was clear in all six games that the Warriors were the better team and that the, the games that the, the Cavs won were some home court momentum, but also it was just like they needed a perfect storm in order to win in overtime. Yeah. You know, they yeah. needed Seth Curry to go one for 13 from three Listen, or wherever he was in after, game two. After and, three and games. After all that, they still barely won. You know what I mean? It was, it was yeah. clear that the Warriors were the better team. I agree, Frank. After three games, when Cleveland was up two one, the Warriors had outscored them for the series at, right. at that point. And and it, it's it's kind of a crazy. Jimmy. We often brings up the lazy analysis. It's like because we even have to define what MVP is. Because the one thing that I noticed when watching the series is Steph just being on the court makes everything easier for everybody. Gets yeah. everybody wide open shots. Because even when he's off, they have to still defend him a certain right. way. Right. So when you well, watch him on that, the court. And, and to your point, Jimmy, they run that pick and roll, and they use Steph as a screener along the baseline. And whoever it is he's setting the pick for, when they come off, whoever that man is like, oh, hell with them. We're doubling Steph. Exactly. Oh, so right. they, he always attracts so, so much So that's what attention. I'm saying. So we have to really like, – this whole MVP thing is kind of hilarious to me well, because – Right, and I thought they did a great job on the broadcast with Van Gundy and Mark Jackson of bringing that up, that even though Steph may not have the stats, him just getting the attention, passing out of that double team and getting the quote-unquote hockey assist or, you know, starting the play with it, it automatically count. at a disadvantage. They did a great job of pointing that out, that even though he doesn't have the stats, he still had a terrific series. Well, let's be clear. Let's be clear. He, he, still averaged, he, still, assists, he still averaged 26 on 41% right. from three. 26 a game. So he definitely had a hell of a series. It's just LeBron was putting up crazy, it, monster type numbers. And Dev, what did you mean to say, Dev? Well, I was about to say, you know, speaking of MVP, I was going to segue in, into that um, because a lot of people had a problem with Iguodala actually getting the MVP. And just like Frank just said for Steph, like it's not – Iguodala's impact in this series wasn't really just in statistics. No, they inserted him into the starting lineup, and the series took a shift. Nobody's going to shut LeBron down, but he made it very LeBron difficult. In turn, LeBron. Well, LeBron's been kind of a volume shooter throughout the playoffs, but he makes it he makes it much more difficult than when LeBron faces anyone else. So, you know, I found myself defending Eagle Dalla actually actually get, getting the MVP. But you guys make a great point about Steph as well. But there was a big push starting from Game Two about LeBron. LeBron getting the MVP even if they lose. And the fact that people had to say even if they lose, it tells you again that people thought from the beginning that Cleveland was going to lose this series. So it's right. been the narrative since it, 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 Devin, it also, told, it also told you that people had decided almost pre-series that they wanted LeBron to get that MVP. Right, so if you lose a series, do you even want that? Like, Do you yeah. still come out and this? I, I was thinking about that because, like, they present the MVP like with the with the trophy, with the whole, with like all the Warriors. Stand. Like, just imagine like all the Warriors are celebrating. You just see LeBron coming up for like the interview, like while they're all <laughs> celebrating behind <laughs> right. and that's with the championship. I'm like, I'm built differently because I would smack that out of the commissioner's hand. I don't want that. Um, you know, most and it's like it goes back to what Jimmy was saying. Like, 
everybody has a different interpretation of the word valuable. Now, if the award was best player or most outstanding player in the finals, then I could see LeBron having a chance to win that. But most valuable, even if you put up Monstar-like stats, if you lose, then what were you valuable to? Mm. Like, where do you... The rating, the ratings, and, and, and you know what's funny? Value from I actually, I actually, actually, I actually thought they were going to actually go ahead and give it to him. And it would have been funny because, you know, it's only happened one other time. We know it's Jerry West. But he's another guy who was in that situation where Jerry West couldn't win a title because he kept losing to better teams. Um, right. So I was like, why should you do the same thing and try to give it to him, j just give it to him anyway? Um, and, of course, Jerry West ended up winning a title. Shout out to the logo. But I, I, thought, they were, I thought they were really going to do that. But I, that was kind of ridiculous then too. But, like, what, what Frank just said is, like, now it's a little bit different than before as in the way they give it out, like, you know, they drag Bill Russell out every year. Bill Russell <laughs> didn't even know who Eagle Dollar was. Yo, there was, like, you know two saying? people carrying Bill Russell, like, for real, for real. Yeah. There was, like, two people <laughs> carrying him to the stage. Because I really stopped doing it. Bill Russell, like, die trying to give somebody a trophy. Yeah, they don't need to, they, they don't need to do that no more. I got a quick question. I got Bill a question Russell, for Muhammad Ali, they need to stop trotting yeah. legends out, man. I got, a, I got a question for, for y'all. Yo, LeBron had a hell of a series, man. But we got to compare him to the all-time, all-time icons and greats. And through game, you know, five, I, I, I saw him get tired. I saw him get winded. He does I, didn't, I didn't really see him quit. In game six, I personally thought that he quit three minutes into the game. And he was going through Damn. the motions. I don't know about um, all that. I don't know about I, that. I, I, thought, nah. I, thought, I, thought in the, I thought in the first quarter that he decided to – run the offense. And here's why I'm going to tell you that. Here's why. In those situations where desperation is everything, yeah, you can get rebounds and we'll celebrate you for your rebound numbers. Yeah, you can get assists. We'll celebrate you for the, re for the assists. We'll celebrate you for the steals, for the blocks. The game of basketball at the end is tallied up in points. Yeah, and 30. Points come, and points are 32. And okay. points come from shot attempts and points come Going into the second half, I think LeBron had maybe 12, I think 12 points. There, there, was, there was definitely, it, at the beginning of the he game, came, and LeBron does this sometimes. Frank, Frank, where he Frank, to get Frank, Frank hold on. Real quick. Quick. He came out and he ran the offense. He came out and he tried to make his teammates better. In that situation, with the talent that you have as LeBron James, you need to have 25 shot attempts by halftime. I think it was a concerted effort um, based upon the Warriors. I, I think this is uh, your man, the legendary Coach Black, because he got criticized and hammered the game before for taking Mozgov out. So in the beginning of the game, I thought they were trying to make a concerted effort to pound the rock down low, Pauls, because that's what it looked like they were trying to do with the two bigs. Fact that Mozgov matters, was doing his thing a little bit. Yeah, the fact that it matters. Defensively. Well, yeah, he's got yeah, a 6'8 like guy on him. He better do his thing. But it, it, looks, it looks like they were trying to force it down there. And I get your point that sometimes yeah. he didn't throw it out the window. But to me, it looked like they were trying to, like, you know, just force the rock down low to punish Golden State for playing Jimmy, that small you're, ball you're, Lana, the Jimmy, dance on Lana. You're, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what they did. But if you're LeBron James, you can go to Coach Blatt at that point and say, look, this is the last game of the season. This is potentially we're going home on a air on a, well not an airplane because they're in Cleveland. Uh, you can either get on board with what I'm about to do, which is shoot the ball, or you can find the exit in the arena um, and leave during this game right here. I honestly I think it's a twofold issue. I, I think a big thing was fatigue. I mean, you're talking 46 minutes a game in the finals, but you're also talking about a guy that's not young anymore. I mean, this is LeBron's what 11th, 12th year in the league. He's played in five straight finals, so like he doesn't get that off season to rest like all these other guys do. Where you, Frank, you take it. No, I'm, Frank, I'm serious. It's a it's a factor. It, it's definitely a factor. Comparing him to the top five, top ten players to ever exist in the why year. though? Why is that? Why are we comparing? Why wouldn't we? He's the best in the, he's but the, I mean, best in the you, world. You can't deny he's that fatigue is a factor when you've, played, when you've played that many minutes. No, like LeBron has played so many more minutes. I think there's there's a statistic that I can't recall, but he's played more minutes in his first 10 years in the league than than anybody in the history of the league, including so, so, all those people you're going to compare so, him to. So what so what we're going to do league. is we're going to lower we're going to lower the bar. Jimmy, no, I'm not. Low, I'm just saying it's it's, no, no, it's a factor. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just I'm a factor. Not for doing it because no, I no, agree. I, no, I I'm agree not lowering the bar, but, but my point is, like, Jimmy, I agree it's a watered down league, but we can't hold him up and tout him 
or, or, or allow society to hold him up and tout him and I not mean, hold them accountable. Society's for what a we... bunch of sheep and dumbasses. Like I don't hold him up and say he's Michael Jordan <laughs> or Kobe Bryant. Like I, I, that's no, I'm being real though. Being real though, like because what's going to happen is LeBron will be gone called soon. You, called you, LeBron, for LeBron will be gone soon, and Anthony Davis and Andrew Wiggins will be the ones mm-hmm. compared. Like how many people had did they compare to Mike before? Like you know, Kobe actually started to win, and they can really make the comparison. Like Harold Miner, Grant Hill, Penny Hardaway, they compared all these mm-hmm. dudes to Mike. This is what they yeah, do. Right. They need, but people need yeah. heroes, man. The other point I wanted to bring up was I, I think a, a part of him trying to get other people involved, and I'm not I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I think he was. Vi- I think you could see during the games he was visibly getting disappointed because he kept going to the rim and he was not getting calls. I'm not saying that they were fouls because I don't think a lot of them were, but I think you yeah, can see the game plan change. Bit. The yeah, game plan changed true. based on him not getting calls get, going to the rim. So and he, he he couldn't be a jump shooter because he was missing a lot of free throws, a lot of shots just front because he was fatigued. So Frank. I think the game plan changed to try and get other people involved because the game plan they had was not Frank, working. Frank, I Frank. thought at one point, and I, and I think um um uh, one of the uh, broadcasters mentioned it. Maybe he was trying to pace himself or something. But, yeah, I, I saw you know, that. Speaking speaking of bitching the rest, yo, shout out to Draymond Green who complains <laughs> every, every call. call. Even, even every. calls he gets, he complains. Even calls he gets, he does. Yo, Draymond had a triple double, right? So he's like an elite list of players with a triple double in the finals. Like they gave the list from '85 to like to to recent yes night. Y'all see the list? Good ass book. Magic. Yo, it was like Magic Bird, Michael, um, and Draymond, Charles Draymond, Martin, and Tim Draymond. Duncan, and Draymond. <laughs> <laughs> Draymond still has not closed his mouth. And LeBron too, be able to Draymond. Yo, shout to Draymond. Close your yo, goddamn mouth. Yo, no, so I'd be, I, I don't, I disagree with you that he quit that early in the game. But I think later on in the game he might have packed it in a little bit because no, not a little in the bit. Fourth quarter, no, you he know, you got J.R. Smith coming down and and jacking up the desperation shots. Shout I mean, to Jr. who quit in he, game he one. Knocked, he knocked a few of them down, but three. It seemed like in the in that like five minute sequence or so in the fourth quarter. A lot of times you didn't even see LeBron in the camera because he wasn't getting back uh, up and down the court. He didn't contest a, a Steph layup that, you know, he puts that into the stands. They could potentially just be down three points. Yeah, so you think he was, at the end, you think you know, he was doing his, uh, his Kobe impersonation when Kobe got pissed at the end of that Phoenix game and he just stopped I mean, shooting? No, nah, because he did that on purpose. LeBron has a history of getting tired and or cramping up, you know, things like oh, so that. You, so you're, mean, saying, you, you, you're, you're saying basically he got tired. The big ass dude. I mean, we say the legends don't get tired. This dude, he's a big ass dude. So, talk about the shack. Yeah, he's like the shack. It might be a little different for him trying to carry around all that weight and do as much as he's doing. But I don't want to be the one falling in line, giving him excuses either. But everybody can not stop. Allen Iverson. And don't. Like, Allen Iverson doesn't ever. You know, he never wanted to come out of a basket. I, I, I think it's interesting, right? Because B. Austin, like, what like, says, let's compare him to the greats and, um. I, mean, I don't think I don't think he's an I don't think he's the greatest of all time. Some people actually say he's the no, greatest player of no, all time. No, of course not. Right? Oh, after game three, somebody told me that taking a two one lead in this series was greater than Magic Johnson as a rookie. As a rookie, finishing off the highly touted seventy sixes in game one of the greatest teams of all time. Forty two points, twelve rebounds, seven assists by a rookie. And all they want to tell me is, well, he had help. Because Jamal Wilkes had 37 points. Okay, but Magic had 42, and he was a yeah. I mean, that's I ridiculous. Yeah, that, 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 everybody else had. Dev, had 28 the other night. Dev, Dev has played it uh, uh, politically correct. Dude, Stay using Dev, that man, with my name. My, I man, my, my, man, my, man, my man mailed it in, and you saw him mail it in. You're familiar with his body of work. You saw the body language. Whether it's frustration, whether it's disappointment, whatever it is, you lost, he lost the faith. That uh, I mean, he was able to will his team to a win, and the opportunity there, was there. The opportunity. there like, I'm not saying that didn't happen. Or I don't think it was three minutes into the game. He might be uh, the I most mean, talented front runner we've ever seen. But I'm with Frank. Like three minutes into the game, like that. Yeah, dude, first, and get, then first, you just try to run the, the, the spot. Then, I mean, no, I think at some point in the fourth quarter, when when the Warriors went up by ten, it was just like, yeah, this is over, and I, I know there's really no chance we can win. Yo, I just Frank, feel like Frank, I just feel Frank. like we can substitute the for Peyton Manning. It's the same thing. I'm a reference. I'm a reference a game. I'm a reference a game. There was a game in Boston where LeBron went berserk. I think he had 48 in that game, and from the time he set foot on the court until the time he left the building, he was in a frenzy. And he was killing. It's the only time I ever saw LeBron James 
with that type. That was uh, game six and, in Boston or something. And, like and it was game six. Yes, it was game six in Boston. And you, y'all know, you, we watched this game, this thing of ours, close enough to kind of know the rivalries. And you know, the rest of the world is like LeBron James is head and shoulders over Paul Pierce, but Paul Pierce doesn't believe that, and we know <laughs> Paul Pierce thinks that LeBron is kind of like an equal or that's his young boy. That was one of the times where I saw him give it to Paul Pierce and Paul didn't have no answer. That's what I expected to see in that instance, and, and I didn't see. I didn't see that frenzy. When you come out and you're passing LeBron and you're, and you're dishing the rock LeBron, if they're not making the calls, you're the best player in the world, make them make the calls. Draymond's going to hack you. Go to the cup. Don't dipsy do. Don't go to the left hand. Go right and make them make the calls. They have to call it. They have to. All right. Well, let's switch That's gears a little bit, man. Yes. Let's go back to the to the winning side. Let's go. Oh, to no, Steve. damn. Let's go to Steve Kerr. <laughs> let's go to Steve Kerr. See how we fell into the trap? Yeah. Yeah. We, we just like everybody else. I know. <laughs> we sold out. But um, there's a lot of folks um out there. That's screaming, oh, this is a Tony Dungy, uh, John Gruden situation. Uh, this is Mark Jackson's team. He deserves a ring. He deserves the credit. Any of you guys on this panel believe that? No. No. I mean, I think Mark Jackson played a role. I mean, I, I don't, I think, you know, I think Jeff Van Gundy brought this up where you have to have good, you know, a, a building chemistry of a team. And I think a lot of that was Mark, the players love Mark Jackson. They, they were a team around Mark Jackson. But I think Steve Kerr was cool shit. Steve Kerr took him to the next level. Steve Kerr, he, he's a better X's and O's guy than Mark Jackson mm -hmm. is. He knew the right moves to make, the right lineup adjustments, things that Mark. A lot of Mark Jackson does is motivation, and he's a great motivational coach. You know, he tries to get the best out of his players, but that doesn't mean that he knows the appropriate lineups to put in. All those things Steve Kerr did in the finals. You know, the big thing everybody looks at is the you know putting Iguodala in the starting lineup. I mean, that's a gutsy coach. You know championship coach winning move. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you should get credit for as a coach. I, I mean, I think Mark Jackson plays a role, but I th absolutely think Steve Kerr. Uh, I mean, Frank, uh, here's, here's the, here's the I thing, agree, right? I agree with Frank 112%, man. Remember David, David West. I just want to say that, like, under, on this team, so. under Mark Jackson, they improved every year. They did do that. Like, you know, um, and Mark Jackson is gone for reasons that may not even be basketball related. You, you were but, right there too. But but with that being said, the one thing about the Warriors that is different this season than all the other seasons was how tenacious they were on defense, and that's the result of Steve Kerr. And also, when you look at the guys that Steve Kerr learned under in terms of coaching, and even he played for, he learned from the best there is, like Lou Olson, Bill Jackson, um, Coach Pop. These are the guys that you know taught Kerr. So, you know, I'm not – no way am I comparing and, it to those and he's guys. he's been a GM. No, so. and, and, and but he's a student of those no, guys. No, but he's a student – exactly. But he's a student of those guys. And when you watch how the Warriors play defense, it's a complete difference. Now, Mark Jackson may deserve credit in terms of, like what Frank said, in terms of building team chemistry because those are the guys. But, again, their general manager made all the personnel moves, so I don't even know if Steve Kerr or Mark Jackson gets credit for that. Um, right. But we always talk about on, our, um, on the greatest podcast on the Internet – how winning a championship takes a little bit of luck, and it's from the top down. Like When you win a championship, you have guys in the front office that have made moves to help you get there. Now, the players are the ones that have to go out and execute, obviously, but if you look at the Warriors organization, from the ownership to the GM to everything, everybody had a part in them now being the champions, and you have to give them that. So shout out to the whole organization because the GM Absolutely. put together literally the deepest team in the league. Like, Absolutely. Sean got, like yo, Sean Livingston balled was out. Like, balling. Yo, he I'm like, yo, he can, like every game. He, can start, he can start for the Cavs. Yeah, I mean, that's what we talked about before the series. We talked about the depth. And, that, I mean, I, to me, that was the biggest factor in the series. Like, you know, you, you stopped Clay Thompson, who basically was disappeared except for one game in the entire series. But Iguodala's putting up 22 points. Most fates at, in game one is giving you buckets. You know what I mean? There's just guys every game you got to deal with. Like yeah, that's the Zeely. You know what I mean? Like, these guys just come out of nowhere. And shout out to Clay Thompson because, like, yo, he just, my man took the finals off. Yeah, but, um, he, yo, you did y'all see the shot that he took of LeBron last night? Little, little, little subliminal. No, I didn't. Uh, at the That's press funny. conference, at the press conference, um, they were asking him like, you know, something about did you think you were a winner or whatever. He says, well, you know, my teammate and he pointed at Steph was like, he's the best player in the world, so we were always going to win. Clay, you disappearing? <laughs> was about to touch on this point as well. Um, when it comes to Steve Kerr, you know, he learned from those guys that Jimmy named, but not only that, like he comes 
he comes to the game with a, a broad perspective because not only is he yeah. a coach now, like yeah. B said, he's a GM. He's been uh, broadcaster. Uh, a broadcaster. Like he he's seen the game and studied the game. From oh, so many and, different and he's got jewelry. Yeah. He's got jewelry yeah. that Mark Jackson don't have. He he's he's on his Robert Ory type joint. So he made the shot though. <laughs> he made the shot. Right, and he's got a great staff around there. No coincidence that one of his guys on the staff, Alvin Gentry, is going to be a head coach next season again. He's a previous head coach. Like, he has an experienced staff. I mean, it's the whole th- it's, a, it's the whole combination. Like, you guys oh, have wait, to take Hold up, hold up, hold up, Frank, Frank. You, you brought up right. Alvin Gentry. Hold up. Did y'all see the Vine video? I'm sorry, i got to bring this up. Of a 60-year-old Alvin Gentry still dunking? Yeah, yeah, he was balling. Yo. Yeah, on that did, y'all see Alvin, did y'all see Alvin Gentry, like, like shout out um the unibrow after the game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, coming. I'm coming, young boy. Coming right back. You're going to do this. But, yeah, but, uh, you definitely have to give, you know, shout out to Mark Jackson, but I think people are going a little overboard with the this is Mark Jackson's team, like, and, and the, black, uh, the black protection. Because first of all, even when teams go through their progression, when they turn into contenders, not many teams go from first round loss to NBA champions. So, you know, I think if Mark would have kept them on that road, they still would have had a ways to go. And I don't know if they would have ever gotten to this point. I but, think um, the difference I think the difference lies in that in an eighty two game season, um, if the talent is there, it's about finding ways to motivate that talent to win when it doesn't matter as much. I think the playoffs is a combination of motivation, but you're already motivated because you're in the playoffs, as well as the X's and O's and the execution and the strategy and tactics. And, and it's I a think long, that's what, it's that's, a long that's, season, that's what, man. Yeah, I think Mark Jackson was built to motivate those guys through 82 games and keep them focused. I and think Steve Kerr was about about that next two or three steps. I mean, yeah, people, took people like to focus on the playoffs, but you know what a big difference was for the Warriors is that they were so dominant that – Steph and Clay didn't play. What was it like? Nineteen fourth quarters in the regular. Like that. That keeps your legs fresh. Real even talk, I mean, of, of course, you know, even, the playoffs is where everything talk. happens. But I mean, they're fresh. These guys don't need to play as much. I mean, it's During obvious. During finals, thing, right? It makes a fact. It makes a difference. During this finals, when they would call timeouts, you would see Steve Kerr say, "Look, they're only running eight. Let's just keep it going." Because he knew by the fourth quarter, he knew yeah. LeBron was tiring and everybody else was tiring by the fourth quarter because their team is that deep. And like I said. They got to get credit from top to bottom because Steve well, Curtin didn't make the personnel moves, man. Didn't LeBron take a two-week vacation in the middle? Yeah, no, 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 no. That just no, shows you how that shows you how terrible this league is right now. I remember my prediction from the beginning of the season. Um, you know, this was supposed to be this was supposed to be OKC's championship, and mid-season when they were struggling trying to get that eighth seed, I still believed it because I thought Kevin Durant was coming back. So even they, you know, they had that sixty-seven win season. It could have, it could have, could have gone a different way. Had, but that's what I'm saying. That but that's that's that, that, that's what makes championships so special because had a little bit of luck. Yo, so many things have to go yeah. right for you to actually win a championship. Like how special are three peats then? When you look, yo, oh my god! When you look at like all the point guards being injured, you not having to play the Clippers, the Spurs, or any like OKC. And even the teams you do play are beat up. It's like, yo, and then in the Memphis series, Memphis was giving y'all that work, and then Tony Allen got hurt. Right. Like, so many things broke right, but that's what makes this thing special because now you got – it's sort of like getting a college degree, right? When you get that paperwork, it don't matter what happens, like, before that or after that, you got it. So FOH to everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but like, it, it, it was a situation with all of those – with the other teams being beat up. And the Warriors stay relatively healthy, you know. Because they're going 12 deep. <laughs> right. And exactly. And, I mean, a lot of people bring up the breaks, but, I mean, it, it's not even like they, they, they had a challenge. You know, w- with these breaks, it just made it so easy for them. To be honest, I mean, they only lost, what, five games during the playoffs, which is, I mean, and, and they dominated the whole regular season, too. So it's not like they went on a big run, you know what I mean? It's not like they got hot. They didn't get hot. They were the best from the first game of the season all the way to the last yeah. game of the season. They were yeah. the best team. And I got to give them credit because I thought they were – see, here's the thing. I have a problem with certain teams, like, when they start to win. Like, I remember my childhood and the Warriors. Organizational. Start, yo, so I'd be like, yo, I don't care if you're the Clippers or the, or the Warriors. You're going to always find a way to lose because you're the Clippers or the Warriors. Oh, yeah. And are not the Clippers and Warriors are, like, two of the best teams in the league. But um, <laughs> the Clippers are always going to find a way to lose, though. Yeah, so the Clippers still didn't get past that hurdle, you're saying, but the Warriors finally got over the hump. But the thing is, even looking into next season – now, this is way early. The draft hasn't even happened. 
But it's going to be more difficult for them to get back than probably Cleveland because who the hell is going to challenge Cleveland in the East? I mean, maybe the, maybe the Wizards? Cleveland will be bad. I mean, that's the huge, that's the biggest question for me is is where does this put the Warriors long term? Because I mean, they're a young team, they're a talented team. I mean, I think the big thing is they got to keep Draymond who's a restricted free agent, but they're going to match anything that that he gets offered. So I mean, yeah. I think I think they're here to stay. To be honest, I think I've seen a lot of that discussion that people think this is a fluke or whatever. But I, mean, I, think I wouldn't Warriors, call it a fluke. I think the Warriors are completely uh, here to stay. If, if, if they don't make I it back next year, that doesn't mean it's a fluke. I think they're here to stay and they're here to compete, but making it through the West. To back to the finals becomes more of an arduous task. Like I, I don't think they're a fluke in the sense of them being very highly talented, highly skilled, good, good core group of young guys. But as as you know, Jimmy and Dev said, man, running through the East, man, all LeBron got to do is call a couple more. Like Dwayne Wade, you want to come run? Um, you know, uh, Kevin Love, Chris Bosh. You know, he'll he'll find a way to stack. The, uh, the Cavs and, and uh, Super Team up to take that load off of them. And, um, See, but, but you know what, though? Mm-hmm. The fact that LeBron tries to create these situations is why you get into situations like this where you have no bench because you make your team so top-heavy. Remember, we said it all the time with the Heat. Like, yo, they are injury away from not being the best team in the league. Right. And, and, the, and the first time they won, had Boston is, come back from injury, I don't know. LeBron might have one championship right now. All I'm and, saying is, and Wiggins would championship if Ray Allen doesn't hit that shot. So a lot of things could have gone a different way. Wiggins would have balled out this series. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, because think about it. On a basketball <laughs> team, two people at least are going to get injured and you're running to the championship. Sometimes you know the dice are going to roll and those two people are going to be your two superstar running mates. And, and that's the luck that LeBron had this season. So while we all feel sorry for him because he didn't have the help that everybody him. expected him to have, I'm saying we as in those. I know. I, I'm off my phone. I got you. I got you. I mean, he can go back to his there, miserable life all I care. <laughs> while everybody's feeling sorry for him, they have to realize that he has a lot to do with the position that he's put himself in. You want to super team up, you know, you want to make the situation what you want to make it and get other guys, not on your level, but, you know, star players – that's that's taken away from what you can do with your bench. So right, I mean, and it's like and it's like we talked about with you know about yeah. what he had to work with. It's like we talk about you know where you talk top to bottom luck. You know what I mean? Like you sign these minimum guys, and some of them turn like it, Atlanta turned out to be such a good team because Damari Carroll. They didn't think Damari Carroll was going to be the player he is. They signed him for nothing, and now he was like you know one of the premier small forwards this yeah. season. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he was like he one of their best paid. players. So a lot of them, a lot of that is is just luck and personnel decisions. I mean. And that sometimes that's just the way it comes out, where you, you, you think you're going to be getting these guys in a bargain, and then they're just – they don't pan that out. That first-round series against the Celtics, that dirty play could have changed the, his, the history of the league. <laughs> but Kevin Love getting hurt in that dirty play. Yo, you got Della is, Vido- you, now you got Della Vidova throwing alley-oops to the ghosts. Like, yo, I do those like, yo, alley-oops to the ghosts. Yo, to the alley-oops. He always trying to throw a hoop. Like, what's wrong with him? Yo, yo, all I know is Wiggins would have balled out this series, man. Should have kept Wiggins, man. Yo, did they find Della, Della Vadova's glass slipper yet? <laughs> yo, nah, this pumpkin, yo, this pumpkin, yo, this pumpkin juice, this pumpkin up. juice all over the arena. Yo, yo the, I hope Della Vadova got all the yams he could get after that after that one game. I that's probably why he couldn't like produce after around. that. <laughs> Yeah, because nah, I don't, I don't even think Delhi played in Game Six, man. Did he even play in Game Six? Yeah, he played. All, he, all the, he played 21 minutes. I can't believe he sold so many jerseys last week, man. We live in such a prison of the moment. Mr. <laughs> yeah, like, all the people, love. And we're going to end it right there, man. And just people say, need a hero, man. Love, Listen, we're going we're gonna to be doing Court Vision episode 256 in a couple years, and we'll be talking about Andrew Wiggins and his sickle fans. Because uh-huh. he's going to become the premier player in the league, and everybody's going to be riding on his dick. Nah. That's unibrow. Probably. Unibrow got it. No, but see, unibrow is different, though. People don't like to jump on the back of, of, of big guys. They like the, the wing players is where it's at. So they're going to be on Wiggins, man. Because Wiggins be banging on people. So. Yeah, that too. Wiggins is Wiggins is more exciting yeah, to watch. Exciting. But I'm um, on a poster. Yeah, so again, man, shout out and congratulations to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, you guys earned it. Um, we'll see how this goes, see if they can get back and, and compete again next year. Um, but look, everybody. This has been another episode of Court Vision. Uh, we probably will be back at you uh, for some NBA draft coverage, but, yeah. but just in case. <laughs> uh, hey, Dev, can we give a shout-out to, um, to uh, Del Curry and Michael Thompson, man, and tell y'all dads to stay home and y'all see what can happen? 
Good daddy. <laughs> Can we give a shout out to? Hey yo, Miss Curry. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Let's stop right there. Yo, Steph, mom, thank you. Yeah, y'all done messed the show up. All right, so look, man. Uh, like I said earlier, check out WarroomSports.com, Sports-Kings.com for B. Austin, Frank, Jimmy. I'm Dev. Look, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance. See you chumps on top. Stop riding jocks. <laughs> the wait is the war room with five nights at the round table. Five Philly guys diversified and educated.